you're 47. What is the likelihood that you personally will go to Mars? 70 percent. We've recently made a number of breakthroughs that I that I'm just really fired up about. And when does that happen? In our lifetime? Yeah, yeah. I'm talking about moving there. So it's like, so if, if you get the price per ticket, maybe around a couple hundred thousand dollars. You might land successfully. Once you land successfully, there will be a mat, you'll be working nonstop to build the base. Uh, so you're, so you're not, not much time for leisure. And uh, once you get there, even after doing all this, uh, there's a very harsh environment, so there's a good chance you die there. Um, we think you can come back, but we're not sure. Now, does that sound like an escape hatch for rich people? And yet you would unhesitatingly go. You know, there's lots of people like climb mountains. You know why they climb mountains? Because people die on, on Everest all the time. They like doing it for the challenge. Elon Musk has a major goal, to get humanity to Mars before he dies. A lofty goal that he reiterated before a crowd on at the satellite conference in Washington, D.C. If we don't improve our pace of progress, I'm definitely going to be dead before we go to Mars, Musk said to the journalists and industry leaders in attendance. SpaceX, founded by Musk in 2002, nabbed the first of many lucrative deals for the burgeoning rocket company in 2008 when the company was named one of two corporations that would ferry cargo to the International Space Station. To date SpaceX has flown 20 cargo resupply missions to the space station, and very soon will send an upgraded version of the Dragon to ferry astronauts to the orbital outposts as well. But this is just the beginning for Musk and SpaceX. Musk has his sights set on the Moon and Mars, but he's worried that our current technology isn't progressing as quickly as it should in order to make Mars happen. That's evident if you look at the commercial crew program. In order to make Mars work, we, we need kind of the next generation of, of rockets and spacecraft. So we think we've got something that will enable people to move to Mars for approximately half a million dollars. Half a million dollars? Yeah. And you can get a free return to ticket with that, by the way. So the thing that most people say about you is the vision of the future that you have is quite breathtaking. And so many times along the way, people have naysayed, haven't they? I guess there's certainly been a lot of attacks. Um, one thing I've, I've noticed in recent months and years is that it's become uh, obvious to a lot of the entrenched interests that, that Tesla and SpaceX are not going to die. Um, and previously, they thought, well, they just basically ignored us or laughed at us. Now we're actually starting to make real inroads and they're treating us as a real threat. Um, and so the, it, is, it is quite daunting. In 2011, NASA's storied fleet of space shuttles retired and space agencies around the world were forced to rely solely on the Russian Soyuz to transport astronauts to and from space. That agreement would only be temporary as NASA tapped SpaceX and Boeing with the task of building its next generation astronaut taxis. Innovation takes time, and after years of delays due to various reasons, SpaceX is on the cusp of launching its first set of astronauts. NASA is still trying to iron out the details, like how long they will stay, as SpaceX completes the last two parachute tests prior to launch. Simultaneously, Musk and SpaceX are working on a massive rocket that will ferry people and cargo to Mars. Called Starship, the heavy lifter is approximately 400 feet of stainless steel that could transport the first people to the Red Planet. That is if all goes as planned. Eagle-eyed onlookers first spotted the towering silver craft in January 2019 at SpaceX's work site in Boca Chica, Texas. That initial prototype was the first step towards reaching Mars and Musk's goal of building a city on Mars with up to one million people in it, preferably sometime within the next 50 years. To do so, SpaceX will need a fleet of massive, silvery spaceships. The company is on its third test article, but Musk hopes to ramp up production to one starship a week by year's end. Unless we improve our rate of innovation dramatically, then there is no chance of a base on the Moon or Mars. Musk said during the conference. This is my biggest concern. Starship will launch atop a super heavy launcher. In true SpaceX fashion, both vehicles will be reusable, which lowers the cost significantly. Musk has said that eventually, each Starship mission could cost a mere $2 million. Starship could launch as early as this year, especially if production rates ramp up the level that Musk hopes. So far, the craft is already booked for one trip around the moon sometime in 2023.
Musk also squashed the notion that his Starlink internet service would go public. According to Musk, that endeavor could net his company as much as $30 billion if it doesn't go bankrupt. Guess how many Elio constellations didn't go bankrupt? Zero, he said. We just want to be in the non-bankrupt category. So for now, Musk says SpaceX is focused on getting the project off the ground and not spinning it into a publicly traded company. SpaceX officials have said that the service could roll out later this year in a limited capacity until more satellites come online. To date, the company has launched 300 Starlink satellites, with another batch of 60 set to launch on Saturday. What I'm trying to do is maximize the probability that the future will be better. So it's sort of altruistic, but I think, why wouldn't you try to make the future better if you're going to be part of it? Now, what do you make of Mr. Musk and the others who are what, they're going to... Oh, Elon! Send, they're going to send their own planes up. Uh, you know, it's rockets, yeah. yeah rockets. Um, <clears throat> I'm skeptical on a couple of levels. By the way, we need people thinking that way. He wants to send a mission to Mars. We need those people in society. Otherwise, the rest of us think that every other day should be like the previous one. So let me just lead with that. Uh, but I can tell you that the first people to do really expensive things where there's the dangerous and people could die and there's no known return on investment, those are not business people. Those are governments. The first Europeans to the New World were not the Dutch East India Trading Company. It was Columbus, funded by Spain. Then he draws the maps, and here's the trade winds, and here's where the hostels are and the friendlies are. Here's where you find the fruit that you can eat. Then you can make a business case for it. Otherwise, it's a really short meeting. If I say, hey, I'm going to go to Mars, bring in all your venture capitalists, and they start asking questions. How much does it cost? I don't know, but a lot. And is it dangerous? Yeah, people probably die. What's my return on investment? I have no idea, probably zero. That's a five minute meeting and it doesn't happen. So you have to, somebody's got to go out there with the long view, the longer than the quarterly report view. And once the patents are awarded and you've established what's dangerous and what's safe, then you make the business case.